Hey, Stephen Young here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts with another High Octane walk around. And today we are looking at a 69 Chevy Camaro. Duh! Third and final year for the Camaro in its first generation. A great car, fantastic selling car, like 230,000 cars in 69. They were just getting started. Sales would even get better than that in subsequent years. But again, 69, the last year for, again, the first generation Camaro. Now, this one here does wear some interesting stripes. And if you know your muscle car history, you know about Don Yenko, who ran a Chevy dealership, I believe in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania. And he would modify Chevys just as Nikki or uh, Motion performance wood or Shelby wood a Mustang and he made these Yenko supercars YSC Yenko supercar and again this one has the full Yenko treatment now it's not an actual Yenko car and you know the thing is there's a Yenko registry so nobody's fooling anybody but it looks great and it's okay to do it looks fantastic but this one has the beautiful hugger orange paint and it's been resto modded with appropriately large American racing torque thrust wheels up front and modern Goodyear high-speed radial tires. Again, way more tire than even a bias belted wide oval of 1969. So modern tires on this car. Otherwise looking quite retro, which is just fine by me. And the cool thing about Camaro was that it was available as either a coupe or a convertible, unlike Mustang, which offered a coupe, a convertible, and a fastback. But if you ask me, this is almost the best of both worlds. Looks like a coupe, but also a fastback. So I think it kind of simplified things for Chevrolet while taking on Mustang coupe and fastback at the same time. Now at the back, the D80 trunk spoiler, a beautiful piece right here. Definitely aerodynamically designed. Mark Donahue and the Penske Trans Am SCCA cars absolutely helped to modify or perfect, I should say, this trunk spoiler. And Chevrolet offered it as RPO D80 on Z28s and Supersports. And today you can get them in reproduction. Uh, but what a good looking car this is all the way around. But the real noise and beauty is under the hood. Let's have a peek. And speaking of that hood, before we pop it, here, of course, is Chevrolet's first year for the ZL2 cowl induction on Camaro. Now, you see a lot of cars today, 67 and 68 Camaros, with steel cowl induction hoods. People say, well, that's a factory piece. Well, actually, no. These cars are so popular, there's a, there's a thriving aftermarket, which will make either fiberglass or even steel cowl induction hoods for 67 and 68 Camaros, which never had them. With that said, 69 was the first year. The cowl induction hood, which you can see right here, is raised up was available on Camaro. And the term cowl induction, well, the cowl is this area right here in front of the windshield and behind the hood, and induction means that it draws air. So as the car goes down the road, there's actually an eddy of pressured air right here, and rather than letting go away, they actually draw it into the engine bay where it does uh, a little bit of help in terms of cooling the intake charge and maybe a small ram effect. But again, cowl induction right here for the first time in 69 from the factory. Okay, let's pop that hood open and have a look at what's underneath. Yeah, classic small block. This is a 1970 vintage 350. Hence, keep in mind, of course, that the 1969 Camaro could be had with a 307, a 327, a three, no 350s yet in 1969, that would come in 70, but again, there was a 302 in the Z28, and of course, the 396 and 427 Copo, big blocks could be had. But if you ask me, the 350 gives you the best of both worlds. It's a small block, it's light, and yet with 350 cubic inches, you have plenty of torque. Nice uh, packaging here, and this one, of course, has disc brakes up front and out back, with the original Delco Moraine style. Uh, power brakes, of course, dual master cylinder on all Camaros that arrived in 67 as a federal mandate. Nice uh, under hood area. And again, this one here, here's the opening where the cowl induction could be fully utilized with an actual cowl induction air cleaner that would seal to the bottom of that. But with that said, this open element gets a nice breath of air as it makes its way into the air cleaner from the hood scoop. And if you like the look of this engine, you're gonna love the way it sounds. So stick around till the end of this video to hear this small block mouse roar to life. Let's look inside. And inside this beautiful Camaro, of course, bucket seats. And in keeping with the Yenko Supercars theme, the SYC graphics incorporated into the seat covers right there, just like Don Yenko did it back in 69. 
Now this one is a base V8 Camaro. The VIN starts with 124, which is awesome. It's a V8 car way back when. 123 would be a six cylinder car, but it doesn't really matter because now it's a fun machine. It's whatever you want it to be. And again, 350 under the hood of this one was born a V8, but that's okay. And that's what you want. But this one does have an aftermarket shifter, which hints at the fact that there's an aftermarket transmission. Yep, a 700 R4 under this transmission tunnel right here. Of course, the 700 R4 arrived in the mid 80s. It's a four speed with overdrive. And what it gives you is a nice low 309 first gear for hard launches, but with this 0.76 top gear for easy highway cruising. Get your cake and eat it too. A B&M ratchet shifter right here helps to assure you Grab one gear at a time as you make your way down the quarter mile. Full gauge package here under the dash, kind of cool from Summit Racing. And of course, a pretty high-end stereo system right here, which we'll look at that in a second out the back of the car. But a nice tidy interior. And getting back to that stereo, yes, we have to open the trunk to have a look at it. This is a fully modern sound system on this 69 Camaro. Oh, wrong key, Steve. Open that trunk right here, there we go. And yeah, here it is. This is the amplifier by Alpine right there with some JL Audio subwoofers, very professionally wired with fuses and circuit breakers. And the thing about this right here, this is probably about 10 times as potent as any factory uh, stereo system would have been in 1969. The beauty of this really is that when you're going down the road with the 350 at wide open, you can still hear your Ted Nugent or your Van Halen or whatever you choose to listen to with perfect clarity thanks to that high tech stereo system in the trunk. And speaking of the trunk, you know, these cars are well known for having pretty big trunks. Now this does take up some of it, the stereo equipment, but this is a larger trunk opening right here than a similar Mustang Fastback. And so that means that if you were a small family in 69, or even now, you could go shopping potentially and put your groceries in the back, or at least a suitcase or two, something that Mustang Fastback could not do. Now, as we make our way toward the front of this car, we do see, of course, the Yenko Supercar graphics right here. And again, these things are available as reproductions. And real Yenko cars, there is a Yenko registry for them. This is not one, but that's okay. We can pay tribute, and that's not a bad thing. Good to see big and bigger Americans, and again, disc brakes in the back, something that Yenko never had. Now it is true that a handful of 69 Camaros were built with like, JL8 four wheel disc brakes. This ain't one of them. And again, these are better brakes than even those. They're lighter and have more surface area for the pads and shoes uh, and, and the rotors. So that's the story of 1969 Camaro, the last of the first generation, a very popular car then and now. To learn more about this 350 cubic inch 700 R4 automatic overdrive equipped car, check it out on the High Octane Classics website.